Hello and welcome to Comedy On Demand, the Matthew Murray podcast, episode number 1,845. Well, actually, it's episode two, but $1,845 is the number of the car repair cost I got hit with today. Ouch! Oh, man. So uh, I will be starting a GoFundMe immediately off this podcast. So if you'd like to donate to the Matthew needed a new left strut, right strut, mounts, wheel balance, uh, spark plugs, wheel alignment, air freshener, hand massage. Oh man, it hurt. I, I love my tiny little car. If anybody has uh, had the chance to hang out with me, you know I am a bad driver. Every person thinks they're a good driver and they oh, everyone else is a terrible driver, but I, I'm amazing. I'm not a great driver, okay? I'm much better than the average bad driver, but I'm aware of my weaknesses, and as a result, I've got a tiny car. I've got a wonderful little 2017 Chevrolet Spark, goes like hell, and this tiny little car makes up for all of my bad driving. It's got all the sensors, all the shoulder checks, all the you're following too close, you're drifting over the line, all of that stuff. And that tiny little car has helped me avoid a million car accidents that I would have in a regular size car. But it is the end of winter time here in Saskatchewan and it is time to get the summer tires on and when I went to get it done they took a look and went yeah whoa bad. And I knew it was bad. I knew it was bad. I was getting a lot of slippage. I was getting a lot of uh, I was turned and I could feel it. I'm not a car guy. If it hasn't got a keyboard attached I can't do it. But I could tell that some work needed to be done. So here we are episode two 30 minutes wiser in podcast land and almost 1900 bucks poorer. But I have dates coming up, so I'm getting better at this. Uh, I'm only ever going to record these things once. I'm not doing a bunch of takes. I'm treating these like stand-up shows. I'm doing them once, single take, and however they come out is however they come out. So upcoming dates, this coming Friday, Oct- uh, April. See, already I made a mistake. October. Where am, why am I in October? I was in October because I was thinking about my wife's birthday. I got to buy her a present. But April, April 12th, uh, I'm in Carrobert. We're doing a fundraiser event for the Kinsmen. I have the chance to be on stage with Mike Dambra and some other guy that he's bringing from Edmonton. So that will be awesome. If you're in Carrobert, Saskatchewan or nearby, there's some tickets available for that. The following week, on the 20th, I am in Yorkton. The Yorkton Terriers are doing a sports night. We're doing a hot stove. I don't know what a hot stove is. I, I, a hot stove is what I cook food on. But apparently that's a sports thing. So there'll be a bunch of sports guys there doing sports stuff. And they said, hey, maybe we should get a comedian because maybe the wives would want to come too. So I don't know if that means I'm the eye candy or I'm just supposed to be funny so that the uh, ladies in attendance don't get bored with all the sports talk. But that is coming up on April the 20th in Yorkton, Saskatchewan. And then May the 3rd, I will be at the Parktown Hotel, Yuck Yucks Comedy Club. Tickets are available now. We're starting to get some promotion out on my social media channels. So get a ticket there. We're going to sell that one out. Uh, Always a good time in the basement of that delightful hotel. So those shows are coming up. More to come. So... Uh, this is episode two, and episode one was awesome. One of the best parts about doing a podcast is there's nobody here. Everyone was like, well, I'll come be a guest on your podcast. I'm like, no, I wasn't asking you to come do my podcast. I was just saying I'm, do- I'm doing a podcast. Apparently, that's a lead in like, hey, do you want to come be a guest? I don't want to talk to anybody, really. This is kind of like an argument I'm always going to win. Because the other person's never going to be here to defend themselves. So people that have made me mad, um, anything that I just feel like pontificating on, I can just talk. And I did the first episode and I loved it. I was addicted instantly. I wanted to do another one right away. But as much as I want to talk, you probably don't want to listen for more than once a week. So I bided my time to the next Monday night. Uh, charge the phone up this time, so I've got plenty of recording time. Uh, I'm learning from my mistakes, and I'm just going to do these myself. Uh, will I have a guest in the future? Probably not. Maybe, if it's someone of particular note. Um, 
One thing I've noticed about doing a podcast is I really don't care how well this does. Like I got some great feedback. I got some horrible feedback, by the way. Uh, you know who you are and meh. But I got some great feedback. But I'm not really worried how many plays this got. I think it got about 50 plays across all the uh, podcasting platforms. Uh, another 20, 30 plays on my YouTube channel. So like that's like 40, 50, 60 people that suffered through it. That's more than just my mom at that point. So I'm not worried about building my audience per se. I just am enjoying the talk. And I don't think this will ever become a sponsored event. Hey, that being said, if like Dude Wipes or uh, some, you know, Zip Recruiter or one of these companies that desperately advertises on every podcast calls, we'll talk. But I'm doing this mainly just because I'm enjoying the talking. If everybody enjoys the listening, bonus points on that. Um, so what I thought, uh, I wanted to mention that I got dates coming up. I also wanted to mention if you are a, a Saskatchewan business, preferably in Saskatoon, but a Saskatchewan business, and you'd like some free ad reads, uh, just message me. And if I like you, I'll do them. And I don't want to do them for your um, from home essential oils company or your uh, Reiki home tiki. I don't want to do any of that. And if I've offended you, then that's cool. But can my podcast. But if you're like a legit Saskatchewan business, you're employing people, you're selling things, you've got a store, I see you in my, my day job life, you're out in the, the business world, and you're not offended by the content, uh, you understand that this is just me doing my thing, and you're okay being associated with it, then uh, let me know, and I'll be happy to do some ad reads on there for you. Uh, but again, I don't care about building the audience. So hey, maybe eight people that I know will hear about your product and uh, I'll get some practice doing ad reads. Uh, so yeah, episode 1845, uh, man, that's a big hit. That is a big hit to the pocketbook, but I'm uh, I'm grinning and bearing my way through it. Some things that I wanted to yak about this week, I'm amazed how I am in essentially the Alabama of Canada. Everybody just does things here the way they've always done it. If there, if I hear the phrase, that's the way we've always done it, one more time in Saskatchewan, I'm going to just pull my bottom lip up over my head and swallow. Okay, I'm done. Uh, if you want to be innovative and make a million dollars, come to Saskatchewan and do something a little bit different and you will get rich. Um I am huge on business and making things a little... Every time I talk to a fellow business owner or uh, a professional, I'm always like, well, how can we do that a little bit better? Who are you trying to talk to? Or how can we sell a bit more? I'm, I'm passionate about making things a little bit better. And I've got this great dry cleaner uh, over by my place here in Saskatoon. It does a great job. Clothes are always clean. And what drives me nuts is every time I drop off my clothes, they ask for my phone number. That's how they put me in their computer. Makes sense. It's a unique identifier. I drop off the clothes. When do you want those? Wednesday. Great. And then they they push a button and a little paper chit comes off of their uh, printer with basically a pickup tab. I have never kept it. I have been going to this dry cleaner now for got to be 10 years, at least eight, if not more. And every single time, doesn't matter whether it's me picking up the laundry or my wife, I just go in, I say the phone number. If I knew the laundry was going to be, uh, the dry cleaning was going to be done Wednesday, I go in Wednesday or a couple days later, say my number, they hand me the dry cleaning and we're done. So they spend money for nothing because the way we always do it is we put the phone number in the computer and we push these buttons and it gives us a price and the little thing prints out and I hand it to the guy and he walks. Now, it's a dry cleaner. You don't have to come out with Uh, retinal scanning, I walk in the door, facial recognition, you already know what clothes I'm looking for, and the machine is already turning to bring me my hanger. It doesn't have to be that cool. But you don't have to give me this piece of paper every time. And it doesn't so much drive me nuts. And it's not about the environment. I hate the environment. I don't care. Give me my plastic straw. Fuck turtles. I don't care. It's not that we're printing paper and, oh, we're wasting... It's a little bit of that, but it's mainly just you don't have to do this. It's like if I told you every single time you started your dishwasher, you had to fill it full of dishes, put the soap in, push the start button and say, ooga booga booga, thank you, maka maka, to make the dishwasher go, 
And maybe 50 years ago, that was part of the process, but now it doesn't need that anymore, but you still do it. Don't do it. Every couple of years, have a look at the way you're doing things. And if there's things that don't need to be done anymore, stop doing them. Okay? If you've got a drawer in your office that you haven't been in in six months, then nothing you need in that drawer is important. Throw it all away. Just throw it away. It's gone. Goodbye. Just burn it and you'll be happy. You got a new drawer. You could put some stuff that you use regularly in that drawer. Drives me crazy. I try to challenge myself to do things better regularly because I learn. I have an education. I want to be better. I don't have to be the best, just a little bit better. Oh, you're lifting that weight. You could, you get more if you lift. Okay, great. I lift it that way. Oh, you're typing it in this way. If you, the hotkey will make it great. Just do things a little bit better, please. And your life will be so much better. If, if you're an office person, hire a nerd to sit next to you for a day. Okay? Just let them watch what you do all day for one day. And they will come back in a week with eight suggestions of how they can do your job faster. Hey, in Excel, here's a formula that would make this quicker. Hey, here's a software that would make that go faster. Hey, you don't got to click. You can do that in three clicks instead of nine clicks by not. They will just make your lives better. And I'm sure that goes in all things. I'm sure a, a mechanic look at my car and go, you know, you wouldn't be wearing your tires out so bad if you turned this way instead of that way. Great. I'll do it. I'll take your advice. So if you know a way that I could be doing something better, like this podcast, then tell me and I'll probably do it unless you're younger and then I don't care because if you're younger, your opinion's not valid. And as you can hear, I'm knocking things over in my office as I go. Okay? It's not clean in here. Anything that was in that box, I probably don't need and I'll set it on fire. But at least I got a brand new microphone that probably picked that up really well. I bet you that was exceptionally clear. And if I cared, I would go back and edit this and, and edit that sound out, but I won't. Um, what else can I uh, complain about? Oh, this, uh, I saw, now that I'm on social media more, because uh, I'm trying to get my presence going there, so I'm actually starting to look at it more. I saw a commercial because I'm poor, okay? I don't pay for the, I don't have paid YouTube. I don't have paid, YouTube, I don't care. You can put 18 ads in front of the video with a little button that says uh, video will start soon and it's not clickable. I will sit through the ad, okay? When I was a kid, I sat through seven to nine minutes of commercials to watch a 30 minute show. So I'm already playing with house money when I've only got to wait eight seconds for a YouTube commercial before I get exactly what I wanted. You can just keep stacking the ads. Every three months I get an email. Do you want to try a free month of uh, YouTube premium? No. Never will. I'm part of that entitled generation that thought the internet was going to be free everything forever and I'm not going to pay. I'm not going to pay for Spotify. I'm not going to pay for YouTube or any of that. So I see ads. I see a lot of ads as I'm scrolling through things. And this ad was for uh, cookies, uh, chocolate chips or whatever. I don't know if it was chippets, the, the, the cookies. And it's a mother and a daughter, and they're making cookies together, and how what a wholesome activity, blah, 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 mmm, cookies. And the daughter says to the mother, how much do you love me? And the mother responds by grabbing the whole bag of chocolate chip, chippets, and pours the whole bag into the batter and says, I love you that much. And the kid looks delighted. You love your kid enough to give her diabetes. Way to go. How is that an expression of love? I grew up in the generation... Boy, that is a phrase that's going to unfortunately keep rearing its head in my podcast. Okay, I heard it. I know I've said it before. I know I said it last time. I know I've said it multiple times already today. I can feel it. I can feel your scorn. The In my day or when I grew up, I am, am old. I have gray hair. I got it. I'm going to do my very best not to let this podcast degenerate into angry old white man ranting, but I hear it. I'm making a mental note and I'm going to make it better. See how I listened earlier? I said, I want better ways to do it. I'm already trying to make my podcast better by not becoming a ranting old bitter white man. Except for this one. When I grew up, food was the reward. 
hey, you did a great job. Here's some ice cream. You got a good report card. Here's um, a cake. Hey, it's your birthday. Gorge. So now as a person post-bariatric trying to, to resurrect a, a proper relationship with food, me and food have got this on again, off again relationship, like an ex that you can't stop nailing once in a while. And I, it's horrible because like, I'm like, I'm over her. I don't need her anymore. And then like once every three months, you're like, yeah, you, you want it. And I'm like, I want it. I, I gorge and it's fried chicken and cookie dough and nasty. And then I, at the end, I wake up in the morning and I'm just horrified with myself and bad. That's, that's what me and food are. So when I see this ad of equating love to excessive chocolate, and hey, I love chocolate. Okay, I'm a chocolate freak. Anybody knows, if you've been to my office, there are multiple reservoirs of chocolate within arm's reach in almost any direction. I love chocolate. So I'm not anti-chocolate. I'm just anti this commercial telling me that the way to express love to my child is via a giant bag of chocolate chips. And it's hard because my daughter's already picking up on it. The other day, uh, she got... I picked her up from school and the teacher was like, oh, she had a really good day today. She did this and this and got her homework done. Great. And she gets in the car. Hey, dad, I was really good today. Can we get an ice cream on the way home? And immediately dad brain like, yes, let's, let's give her the carrot. Good job. Reinforce the behavior. And I'm like, and then so I've now I've said to an eight-year-old, yes, we're going for ice cream. And now I got to go, whoa, that's wrong. Can't reinforce positive behavior with food, making the parallel, eight-year-old mind doesn't see it. So now I've got to pivot and try to convince an eight-year-old it would be way better to go home and do get a board game or play, do something. I didn't get her the ice cream and I suffered through the tears and the, the frustration and I apologized to her because I'm the one that set the uh, expectation on that... Uh, on that uh, ice cream and I just realized I didn't have the mic gain set properly so maybe I've been horribly loud up until now but I've just changed it hopefully I haven't changed it too much but I suffered through it and did what I had to do to not reinforce good behavior with food because it's hard because and I and I wanted the ice cream probably worse than she did um, speaking of my daughter who's amazing uh, saw a thing online about the dream gap so girls, when they hit age seven, there's this concept that's coming out now called the dream gap, that when a girl is five, she starts thinking she can't be good at math, and by eight, she's convinced that boys are smarter than girls, and by nine, they don't think they can be CEOs anymore, and by 11, they're worried about... And I, for one, applaud society for finally getting girls to think like that again. We've we, like we we got to put them back significantly. And and now that we're getting this new generation adjusted down, wonderful. No, I'm kidding. Um, I don't think that's cool at all. But when I heard about all this uh, dream gap stuff, which I don't like, I don't want girls to ever think they're uh, incapable I immediately went well geez does my daughter do that and no my daughter uh is quite convinced she will rule the world with an iron fist at some point no has has definitely contemplated being quote-unquote the boss or being the the boss loves math watches uh this Netflix uh wonder of our world it's so something with Morgan Freeman where he's it's the history of the planet and reptiles and cool plankton. I can't remember the name of it. But she's into science, loves science experiments, loves math, thinks she can be a boss. No dream gap happening at the Murray household yet. And that's because my wife is not an engaged parent. And so because I'm doing all of it, this kid is succeeding. And that's great. Uh, my wife is definitely the, the backbone of the family. Uh, she did hear the first podcast. She did notice that uh, I acknowledge she's got a much more wildly successful YouTube channel and I did not give her a plug so she noticed that and uh, she'll notice again here when I don't plug it again uh, but one thing she has done that I'm incredibly proud of her for 
uh, is marrying me because that was a great choice. She really traded up from where she was in life prior to me. But other than that, the other thing I'm proud of her for is uh, our daughter goes to a small private uh, uh, Montessori school, uh, which really means she's better than your kid. No, uh, it means I just have no faith in the public school system at all. And it's a great little school and it's a house that they've rebuilt to become a school, but they didn't have uh, speed limit signs, uh, school zone signs. So my wife wrote to the city and, hey, we need a letter and we need proof letterhead, get the principal to write, blah, blah, blah. Boom. Next semester, they've got the no speeding 30 kilometer an hour school zone set up around the school. Awesome job for her. The, a lot of people are still speeding by the school because they're terrible people. But what we need now is one of those signs that gets put out in the middle of the road along the, the line in the middle of the street between the two directions. Uh, you would think that would not be that hard to get. You would think there is a, a, a storage room somewhere in Saskatoon with those things printed en masse because their proven ability to reduce speeds and stop kids from getting splattered across windshields would make them plentiful. But no, they have to be issued out by the uh, city police. Uh, the traffic division has one officer dedicated to schools, uh, one officer that is yet to respond to a voicemail. And hey, it could be they're on vacation uh, or they don't care, which is either possible, but we'll give another week or two. So I'm just dropping that nugget here. The ongoing saga of her... Is it Sega or Saga? I've heard both. Uh, I prefer Sega, but Nintendo's even better than Sega. Uh, but we're going to try and get that uh, sign for the school. And if it doesn't happen in the next two weeks, I will bring my legion of 40 listeners to bear uh, on the... Uh, Saskatoon Police Department. And if we get it immediately, I will say it was all me. I'm sure we will they'll simply, oh, we missed your voicemail. That guy was on vacation for two weeks. No problem. Here's your sign. Because for the most part, they're doing the very best they can. And I will still attribute it to me. So that'll be great. Uh, and when we get it, it'll be great. It's been, it's been a tough week. I tell you, the day job has been, has been grinding on me hard this week. We are still trying to get to the 170 uh, 170 by June 15th, the wait, uh, we're not progressing. We're not regressing. We're not regressing, which means we're not getting heavier, which would be progressing and getting heavier. We're not progressing at getting lighter, which would be getting down. We are stable, which I'll take. I have been to the gym very consistently the last few weeks because the YMCA is where old men go to exercise, and I fit that bill, and it's worked out great. So theoretically, because I'm going to the gym three times a week, and I'm having about 130 to 170 grams of protein a day, and I'm lifting a little bit heavier every day or two, every, every workout or so, every workout I try to increase one of my weights. So theoretically, I'm getting stronger. I don't show any of it. I'm doing no cardio. I'm getting not no useful fitness out of this. But if my weight is staying the same and the the if my weight, my mass is staying the same, but the weights on the weight bench are going up, theoretically I'm getting stronger, theoretically I'm getting more muscle mass, but the number on the scale is not coming down. And you really need to judge people by the number on the scale. That's really why we measure weight. That's that's why we do it. That's why clothes size clothes have sizes. That's that's not how you should judge people. But I do need to to get down to 170. But I'm, I got two months. My guess is I'm probably going to have to by episode three of this because it's the eighth today, and the fifteenth. The fifteens are big numbers in our families. Uh, I'll I'll touch on that one on next episode. But uh, I'll probably between April fifteenth and June fifteenth have to do something very specific and strenuous and extreme that my wife will disagree with bitterly to get where I need to go. Um, so that'll be great. But yeah, the day job has been very strenuous. Uh, it's been a tough slog lately. So uh, the high stress, 
the uh, desire to eat and reward myself and punish myself. And just eating in general is awesome. So that's really tough. But that's that's what I'm doing. Um, I've got a bunch more stuff here that I'd like to complain about. But you know what? We're at 25 minutes. And between not knowing if the microphone was good the whole way through and figuring out what I knocked over halfway through, I'm good. I don't think... If you've got like three hours to listen to me because you're driving somewhere, uh, hopefully... By the time you hear this, this will be episode two of episode like 300 and you can just go on to the next episode. But if it's now and you just heard this nip episode now, then that's it. So off you go back to your regular day. I still don't have a delightful sign off line. I don't think I'll get one, but I do appreciate everybody listening. Uh, this is going to become a thing. I'm going to do it. I like talking to no one. I'm Matthew, and I should have a nice send-off tagline, but I don't.